uh, in the sense that um, I will speak, I will took advantage of having translation for making my speech uh, in Spanish uh, in a few minutes that I have to do it, especially because the Caribbean is a region of many languages. And I think uh, it's good to listen to Spanish in this audience, audience. Thank you very much. You caught me sleeping there, Ambassador. I thought you were going on. OK, the opening statement for the conference, and I can know I can ask uh, Hillary, Vice Chancellor, University of the West Indies, and you realize that I'm actually walking the talk here, dropping the titles, which I hope you do not mind, um, that we really do want to try and bring this program on schedule, yeah, so that we can have robust discussion, which, of course, Sir Hillary, I've gone back to his title, will be part of. Ladies and gentlemen, one of our great, or one of our really serious contemporary Caribbean thinkers and academics, Sir Hilary Beckles. Uh, very good morning, everyone. I wish to begin by thanking my host, Winston Ducoran. Arguably, this morning, the most dangerous man in the world. He has brought us all here to plan a revolution. <laughs> but we in the Caribbean are the most revolutionary people in the world. So we're not here this morning to, to plan revolution we are here this morning to restart the revolution. And we are restarting the revolution because there is a perception that it has stalled. And it needs to be re-energized and refocused. On my way here last night, I was sharing my ideas with a passenger on the plane, and he said, he asked me, he said, Hillary, do you believe in God? Why are you planning ungodly behavior? Because, he said, the Caribbean is the most fragmented and fractured place in the world and as Eric Williams stated, what God has put asunder, let no man put together. And that the Caribbean is a world united by fish and divided by people. I wish to comment upon that because effectively what we are speaking about this morning is latest interventions and in development discourse. We all know what we want. We wish to see the Caribbean world develop more aggressively its material infrastructure. We wish to see systems of governance and political relations that are rooted and the Caribbean revolutionary philosophy of justice for all and freedom for all. We wish cultural dynamism, cultural tolerance and respect. All of this has been a part of the Caribbean revolution. The concept of the Caribbean as the crossroads of the world is just the beginning. I would wish to suggest that the Caribbean is the cradle of the modern world. And that what we have been trying to do these past 50 years is to strengthen and to create fundamentally what is the Caribbean world. Let us speak then about the Caribbean revolution. We are 
the most globalized people on God's earth. We are the most globally integrated people on God's earth. Just look around at who we are. We are the peoples of Africa, of Asia, of Europe, indigenous peoples, all thrown together in this Caribbean space to shape a distinct and unique Caribbean civilization. This Caribbean is where the West began. The concept of the West as we know it today, this is where it all started in this Caribbean. This is where the forces of Europe, of Africa, and Asia disturbed the indigenous communities and restructured the world in the modern ways. This is what the Caribbean is, the place where all of this began. But the model of development based upon native genocide, the enslavement of African peoples, the deceptive indenture of European peoples and Asian peoples especially, all of that has generated its own legacies. We have been struggling and fighting to uproot those legacies in order to liberate the potential of the Caribbean peoples. And I would associate the genocide of our native peoples, the African enslavement, the indenture deceptively of the Asian people. All of these are just the three scenes of one historic act. And we have to understand this. We have to begin by Believing in this, this becomes the philosophical basis of our departure. These models of development that called into being these crimes against humanity built economies that were extractive of Caribbean wealth. Models historically fine-tuned over 500 years, extracting from this region all of its material wealth. We have to turn around those economic models. And to turn those models around, we have to accept that we are crafting a revolution to reverse these historical trends. Let us take, for example, let us take, for example, the concept of nation building. Building nations out of this historical experience is in itself revolutionary. The grounding of our nations and the philosophy of freedom is in itself revolutionary because our civilization was built upon slavery, indenture, and native genocide. Freedom, therefore, is revolutionary in this context. Domestic economic development is revolutionary. The notion that production of wealth in this region is for the benefit of the people of this region is revolutionary. That is contrary to the historical models where production and wealth creation were generated for the benefits of others beyond our shores. The development of a democratic sensibility is also revolutionary against this context. If you enter into the conversation about European economic development, and this is my discipline, my academic discipline is economic history. When you look at European economic history, the Industrial Revolution, and all of the other systems of material expansion in Europe, they locate their ideological center of gravity in the civilizations of Rome and Greece. The philosophical underpinnings of those developments, they situate in Rome and Greece. We have to recognize that we in this Caribbean world must situate our philosophy of freedom in the Haitian Revolution. Thank you. 
this is where in our hemisphere for the first time ordinary people were able to mobilize to bring a democratic sensibility to their society, to uproot slavery and to say, as from today, all persons in this society are free and are citizens. The first time in this hemisphere that reality was a part of our civilization. And we have to respect that and begin with that. This is where we took our first step into the modern world. And so the belief then that our development has stalled is primarily because there is a view that many of the things we have been doing have been counter-revolutionary. Many of the ways in which we have conceived of development within the context of Caribbean history have been counter-revolutionary. Let us look at the significance of all of this. Caribbean peoples were able to overthrow the most oppressive regimes ever created in human history. And to do this required tremendous confidence and self-belief. From the Haitian people to Saint Louverture, all the way through Marcus Garvey and beyond, to create the modern democratic Caribbean required tremendous confidence and self-belief. The view that our confidence as a people is waning, the view that doubt is overtaking the Caribbean world, to live in a culture of doubt is counter-revolutionary because we Caribbean peoples have no historical reason to have doubt or to lose our self-confidence. So we are speaking then about the regeneration of the revolution to restore confidence and self-belief as the philosophical basis to drive our engines forward. We have to leave home finally. We have to stop seeing ourselves as appendices and appendages of other power systems in the world. We have to leave home, finally. We have to say, we have to say to Western Europe and all of the other civilizations, we are a Caribbean peoples and we are leaving home. We must begin with the process of reparatory justice for this region. <laughs> reparatory justice for all of the crimes that have been committed in this region is critical to the rebuilding of our self-respect as a people. It is critical to the maturity of our sense of citizenship. It is going to be critical for our sense of the ownership of the Caribbean. This is our home, and all of those who have committed crimes in our homes must